Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a problem involving static equilibrium. And this is a situation we have. We have here the step-by-step -step science sign, which has a mass of five kilograms. It's hanging from the wall and is supported by these two wires. And they're hung over this point right here. This wire makes an angle of 52 degrees with the top of the step-by-step -step science sign. This wire makes an angle of 57 degrees with the top of the step-by-step -step science sign. And of course, we would like to know what is the tension in wire number one and what is the tension in wire number two. Now this problem involves static equilibrium, static because the object is not moving, and equilibrium because since the object is not moving, the net force acting on the object must be zero and all the forces are in equilibrium, so to speak. All right, now for static equilibrium, we can sum up the forces in the x direction, sum up the forces in the y direction, and we sometimes need to sum up all the torques, the turning forces. But in this situation, there is no torque, so we're only going to sum up the forces in the x direction and sum up the forces in the y direction. Now, in order to do that, to sum up the forces in the x and the y direction, we need to draw in the forces. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do, the first step we're going to do to solve this problem is to draw in all the forces. And the first force I always like to draw in is the force of gravity. The force of gravity acts straight down and it's calculated mg, the mass of the object, times the acceleration due to gravity. Then of course, there is the tension, the force of tension in wire number one, and there is the force of tension in wire number two. Okay, now we want to sum up the forces in the x and y direction, and the weight of the sign mg acts in the y direction, but t1 and t2 act somewhere between the x and the y axis. So that tells us, yes, once again, we need to break the tension 1 and tension 2 into their x and y components. So there's maybe two ways you could draw this. I like to draw the x component of t1 in that direction and the x component of t1, excuse me, the y component like that. Then we would also draw the x component of t2 and the y component of t2. Now you could also maybe draw the y component up here and the x component across this way and the y component for two and the x component for two. But I think it makes more sense. You can see these two are equal and opposite down here and these two forces are supporting or are in equilibrium with the weight of the object. Okay, so I would say maybe that's the end of step one. We drew the forces in. We broke the two tension forces into their x and y components, and now we can add the forces up. Now you will notice in the x direction, we have only two forces. We have T1x acting to the right in the positive direction, and T2x acting to the left in the negative direction. So we're just going to put down, we have T1x minus T2x, set that equal to zero, and you should notice maybe that T1x and T2x are going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now for the y direction, you can see as we said, we have the y component of T1 and the y component of T2 and they are in equilibrium with the weight of the object or it's really the, these two components that are holding up the sign and supporting that weight mg. So I'm going to write down T1y and T2y plus, because they're pointing in the plus direction, and mg minus. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to write, using our trig function, sine and cosine, we're going to write terms for all of these, except for mg, because we already know what mg is. But we're going to use our trig functions to write terms for t1x, t2x, t1y, and t2y. But let's get mg out of the way first. mg is simply the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 49 newtons. Now for T1x, here's T1x, you'll know it's adjacent to this 52 degree angle, so therefore T1x is going to be the cosine of 52 times T1. T1y is opposite, opposite is the sine, so T1y is the sine of 52 times T1, and we basically do the same thing for the components X and Y for tension number two. Okay, so there we have our terms, and now we can substitute these terms into these two equations and then solve for T1 and T2. T1x minus T2x is simply cosine 52T1 minus cosine 57T2. And then for the y components, 
we have those factors sine of 52 times t1 plus the sine of 57 times t2 minus 49 newtons. Okay, so now we can start solving for t1 and t2. And what I'm going to do on the next slide is I am going to bring these two equations with us and then we're going to solve for t1 and t2. Now these are the same two equations we had on the previous slide. Here's our sign and our situation. Now you'll notice we have two equations, this equation and this equation, and we have two variables in each equation, t1 and t2, t1 and t2. So we have two equations and two variables. We need to solve for those two variables. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could add the equations up, you can do substitution, you can set them equal to each other, but I think it's best and easiest in this case with the um, cosine and sine to solve for one and substitute it into the other equation. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this equation. We're going to solve this equation for T2, substitute that value in here and solve for T1 first. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve this equation for T2. I could solve this one for T2, but this one's a little easier since it's a little simpler equation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this cosine 57 to the other side. And you can see we have that those two forces are equal to each other. Then we're going to, those two values are equal to each other. Then we're simply going to divide by the cosine of 57. And we get that T2 is the cosine of 52 times T1 divided by the cosine of 57. And that means that T2 equals 1.13 times T1. So we solve for T2 in terms of T1. Now you can see I can simply take this value, which is T2, and substitute it into this equation for T2. And if I write that all out, I get the sine of 52, T1 is the same, the sine of 57 is the same. I take T2 out and I put this in its place right there, minus 49. Now I can see I have one equation, one variable, and I can solve pretty easily for T1, which we're gonna do. The sine of 52 is 0.79. The sine of 57 times 1.13 is 0.95. We still have our T1 and we still have our T1 and then we have minus 49. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply add these two together. 0.79 plus 0.95 is 1.74 and then I move the 49 to the other side and you can see I can solve for T1 is simply 49 newtons divided by 1.74 is 28.2 Newtons. So you can see this force, T1, the force in the first cable here, the first wire, is 28.2 newtons. Now, how do we solve for T2? Well, you can see up here we have T2 is 1.13 times T1. Well, obviously we know T1 now, so we just substitute T1 in, and we simply get that T2 is 31.8 newtons. Okay? So there we did it. That was pretty straightforward, I think. We drew the forces in, we added up the forces, we then we substituted our values in after we wrote the terms, and we solved for T1 and for T2. I think if you follow those steps, it's pretty straightforward, and I think you can do that too. All right, so thank you very much for watching. If you found that video helpful, you could do one of three or all of the following three. You can sub substitute, you can subscribe, to my channel. Get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video, and you can leave me a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.